So if you're interested in knowing how to craft your own healing stories, you can find information about how to do that in my book, Dreamweaver's Guide, which is a book about how to craft enchanting sleep stories and calming narratives. And there'll be a link in the description where you can find access to my books. Hey dreamers, welcome to tonight's sleep story. I'm Dan and I'll be your guide as you embark on this relaxing journey into slumberland. If you like this bedtime story or have thoughts for future sleep stories, please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. You can also support the channel on Patreon where you'll find audio voice only versions of my sleep stories. Thank you for your continued support. And before the story begins, imagine that you're being told this sleep story to the relaxing backdrop of rain outside. Just take a moment to allow yourself to get comfortable and close your eyes and as you drift deeply and soundly asleep I don't know whether you'll drift deeper asleep to the sound of my voice or to the spaces between my words and with your eyes closed you can begin to have a sense of relaxing your mind and body as I count down from 20 to 1. Becoming deeper absorbed in the experience with each number. From 20, beginning to focus on the top of your head. Noticing what your head is resting on. How it's supported gently in place, the comfort in and around your head as it rests there. 19. Having a sense of the muscles around your scalp and the back of your head softening and relaxing deeper and deeper, drawing in peace and comfort with each breath that you take, before moving your awareness around your face. 18. Focusing on what it's like for that relaxation to spread around your face, your ears and your cheeks. Having the muscles in these areas soften and relax. 17. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and across your forehead. While the muscles around the side of your head and over the top of your head begin to relax deeper and deeper. 16. Noticing how you can pay attention to fading tension. Or perhaps find that Tension dissolves without paying it any attention at all. 15. And you can continue to allow that relaxation to spread down around your mouth. Relaxing your lips and your jaw. Relaxing the muscles around the side of your neck around to the back of your neck and around your throat. 14. And as your jaw relaxes and hangs slightly loose, limp and comfortable, that relaxation can continue to move down to your shoulders and your upper back. 13. 
And I don't know whether that relaxation happens fastest around your shoulders or in the upper back or perhaps down the tops or the front of your shoulders as that relaxation progresses around your back and your chest softening and relaxing those muscles fully deeply and comfortably twelve and as those muscles soften and relax while you rest there that relaxation can begin to spread down the arms to the hands, all the way down to the fingertips. Eleven. And I don't know which arm will relax fully fastest, whether it'll be the left arm or the right arm, or whether the arms will relax at the same rate and speed as each other. Ten. And as that relaxation continues through those arms, it can flow down through your stomach, your sides and lower back, all the way down to your bottom before extending deeply down through your legs to the tips of your toes. Nine. And as your body becomes deeper and deeper relaxed while you drift into the most pleasant sleep, so your mind begins to relax as a wave of healing light gently passes down through your body. Eight. You begin to have a sense of that healing light touching your forehead, enveloping your face and head with healing deep relaxation, absorbing comfortably and gently into you with each in-breath that you take. Seven. Filling you with peace and calm. Spreading that healing, restorative, recuperative light down through your body. Calming your mind. Six, breathing in healing, calm relaxation. And breathing out any stress or tension. Five. Aware of that Feeling light passing down your neck, softening and relaxing those muscles, spreading that healing light throughout the neck as it spreads down with the next breath to your shoulders, around the back of your neck and down into your arms. Four, gradually continuing that flow of healing light all the way to the tips of the fingers. Three, and with another in breath. The healing light can spread down through the body, softening and relaxing muscles, healing deep within the body. 
filling the body with pleasure and deep relaxation. Two. As the light journeys down around your stomach, your lower back and sides, into your buttocks and all the way down to the soles of your feet. Perhaps noticing your whole mind and body filling with a deep sense of peace and calm. One, and as you allow that light to flow with each breath, you can find your mind drifting deeper and deeper asleep as you drift comfortably into this story. And in the heart of a world not quite like our own. There was a forest as ancient as time itself. It was known as the Whispering Woods, a place where every leaf, every stone, and every gentle breeze seemed to speak of old magic and untold stories. In these woods, our tale begins with Eldrick, the kind-hearted explorer with a heart full of wonder and eyes filled with the thirst for discovery. As Eldrick stepped into the embrace of the Whispering Woods, the air around him changed filling with a serene melody that seemed to flow from the very essence of the forest. The trees, tall and proud, stood like ancient guardians, their leaves whispering secrets of ages past. Each step he took was cushioned by the lush green moss that carpeted the forest floor. A soft tapestry woven by nature herself. Eldrick took a deep breath, the air rich with the earthy scent of pine and the sweet fragrance of wildflowers that bloomed in hidden glades, the sun gently peeking through the canopy of leaves, cast a dappled light that danced upon the ground, creating patterns of light and shadow that played around Eldrick's feet. The forest was alive with the soft, melodious chirps of unseen creatures, a symphony that spoke of the peace and tranquility that reigned in this enchanted place. In the distance, a gentle stream murmured, its voice a soothing lullaby that flowed through the woods, weaving a spell of deep relaxation and calm. As he wandered deeper into the heart of the whispering woods, Eldrick felt a sense of awe at the beauty that surrounded him. The trees seemed to lean in their branches swaying gently, as if welcoming him into their midst. The air was filled with a gentle breeze that carried with it the subtle whisper of the forest, 
words of welcome that only the heart could understand. In this magical forest, time seemed to stand still. The hustle and bustle of the world outside, fading away until there was nothing but the present moment. Eldrick's thoughts, usually a whirlwind of plans, and memories began to quieten, his mind becoming as peaceful as the tranquil woods he walked through. The whispering woods, with its ancient magic and serene beauty, was a place where one could truly connect with the essence of nature, where every step was a journey into a world of wonder and tranquility. And as Eldrick ventured further, each breath drawing him deeper into a state of peace and calm, he knew that his journey through these mystical woods was only just beginning. As Eldrick continued his serene journey, through the magical whispering woods, he stumbled upon a sight so enchanting that it seemed to have leapt straight out of a fairy tale. Nestled in a clearing, where the sun's rays gently kissed the earth, was a village unlike any he had seen before. It was a village of fairies, tiny beings who glowed with an ethereal light, their delicate wings shimmering like the morning dew on cobwebs. The village was like a kaleidoscope of colours, with homes crafted from hollowed out mushrooms and acorns their doors no bigger than a handprint. The architecture was a harmony of nature and whimsy, with flower petal roofs and windows framed by interwoven twigs. The air was filled with the sparkle of fairy dust and the soft, dappled sunlight that filtered through the leaves above seemed to dance along with the iridescent colours of the fairies' homes. At first, the fairies fluttered about in a flutter of wary curiosity, their tiny faces peeking from behind leaves and flower petals. Eldrick stood still, his heart open and his intentions clear in the gentle smile that graced his lips. He knew the language of the woods, one of patience and respect, and he waited, letting the fairies come to him in their own time. Slowly, as if drawn by an unseen bond, the fairies began to emerge. They were a myriad of colours, each fairy's glow a different hue, from the softest lavender to the brightest emerald green. Their wings were like gossamer, delicate and translucent, fluttering gently as they moved. One fairy approached Eldrick. She had bright, curious eyes and wings that shimmered with a light blue hue. In a voice that was like the tinkling of a silver bell, she spoke. Welcome, traveller, to our hidden village. I'm Leela and these are my kin. Eldrick knelt down, his eyes level with the fairies. I'm Eldrick, a wanderer of the woods. Your village is a marvel a treasure 
hidden away in the heart of the forest. Leela's laughter was like music, and soon more fairies gathered, each introducing themselves in delicate voices. The fairies began to share their harmonious songs, melodies that seemed to capture the essence of the woods. The gentle rustle of leaves, the soft whisper of the wind, and the tranquil flow of distant streams. Their songs wove a tapestry of sound that was both soothing and uplifting. Eldrick closed his eyes, letting the music wash over him, each note drawing him deeper into a state of peaceful reverie. Fairies' songs were a gift, a sharing of their world, their spirit and their joy. As the melodies continued, the fairies danced around Eldrick, their movements a graceful ballet in the air. The light that emanated from them painted the clearing in a myriad of ever-changing colors, turning the village into a living, breathing rainbow. In that magical moment, Eldrick felt an overwhelming sense of connection, not just to the fairies, but to the entire forest, and every creature within it. The whispering woods were a place of wonder and magic, and the fairy village was its beating heart pulsing with life, light, and song. In the heart of the fairy tale village, as the last notes of the fairies' songs lingered in the air, a change came over the gathering. The luminous smiles of the fairies dimmed, and a hush fell upon the vibrant glen. Leela, with a sombre expression, turned to Eldrick. Kind traveller, our songs and dances mask a deep sorrow that afflicts our village, she began, her voice tinged with sadness. Eldrick listened intently, his heart open to the troubles of his newfound friends. Leela continued. A mysterious blight has fallen upon our home. The plants wilt, the flowers lose their hues, and our magic wanes. We fear that the heart of the forest might soon fall silent. The gravity of their plight weighed heavily upon Eldrick's heart. He could see the worry in the eyes of each fairy around him. They glow, flickering like the last embers of a dying fire. Is there a way to lift this blight? How can I aid you in your time of need? Eldrick asked, his voice firm with resolve. A glimmer of hope sparked in Leela's eyes. There is one thing that may save us. The moonflower. It's a rare and magical bloom that grows deep within the forest. Its petals hold the power to cleanse and rejuvenate. But the path is perilous, and none of us can venture far from the village, or else our light fades completely. Eldrick stood, determination etched on his face. Then I'll retrieve this moonflower for you. I don't fear the depths of the forest, for its whispers have always guided me. The fairies, moved by Eldrick's bravery, gathered around him. They gave him a small vial of fairy dust, promising that it would aid him in his quest. Leela then gently placed a miniature compass in his palm. Its needle, made of a 
single silver strand. This will guide you to the heart of the forest, where the moonflower blooms under the light of the full moon, she explained. Eldrick tucked the compass safely into his pocket and prepared to depart. The fairies, their faces now lit with a flicker of hope, chanted a blessing, their voices weaving a protective melody around him. With a deep breath, Eldrick stepped away from the village, venturing deeper into the whispering woods. The forest around him seemed to sense his purpose, its ancient trees standing tall and steadfast as he passed. The deeper he journeyed, the more the woods whispered their secrets, guiding him through veils of mist and over gentle streams. As the sun began to dip, below the horizon, painting the sky in hues of gold and crimson. Eldrick found himself in a part of the forest he'd never seen before. Here the trees were older, their branches intertwining high above, creating a canopy that shimmered with the light of the first evening stars. Eldrick's journey for the moonflower, the only cure for the fairy's ailment, was fraught with unknown challenges. But he felt steadfast, driven by the desire to help. As night fell, and the forest grew darker, Eldrick's resolve only grew stronger. His steps guided by the light of the moon and the hope of the fairy's song. As Eldrick ventured deeper into the heart of the whispering woods, under the silvery glow of the moon, the air around him grew denser, teeming with the ancient magic of the forest. It was in this enchanted realm where shadows danced and the unknown lurked, the Eldrick encountered a creature of legend and lore, a majestic griffin. Perched upon a towering elder tree, with eyes that gleamed like molten gold, the griffin fixed its gaze upon Eldrick. It was a fearsome sight, with the body of a lion and the head and wings of an eagle, its feathers glinting like polished armour under the moonlight. Eldrick, though taken aback by its imposing presence, stood his ground, his respect for the creatures of the forest, evident in his calm demeanour. The griffin, sensing Eldrick's fearless heart and pure intentions, unfurled its grand wings and descended gracefully to the ground. Its movements were a display of power and elegance, each step resonating with the ancient wisdom of the woods. Amoralius, the griffin spoke, in a voice that rumbled like distant thunder, guardian of the deeper realms of these woods. What brings a human so far from the beaten path? Eldrick, his voice steady, replied, I seek the moonflower to save a village of fairies from a blight that withers their home. I venture deep into these woods, guided by the hope of their healing. Aurelius, upon hearing Eldrick's noble quest, softened his gaze. 
Your journey is fraught with challenges, Eldrick. The path to the Moonflower is twisted and perilous. But I shall aid you, for your cause is just and your heart is true. With Aurelius at his side, Eldrick felt a renewed sense of courage. The griffin, soaring above, guided him through the forest's labyrinthine paths. Its keen eyes spotting hidden dangers and its mighty wings clearing obstacles that lay in their way. As they travelled, Aurelius shared the wisdom of the woods with Aldric. He spoke of the ancient trees that whispered secrets of old, the streams that carried tales of forgotten realms, and the stars that held the history of the world in their eternal glow. With each word, Eldrick's understanding of the forest deepened, and his connection to its magic grew stronger. They journeyed through glens aglow with bioluminescent fungi, and crossed bridges woven from living vines. In the heart of the night, under a sky filled with stars, they traversed misty valleys where the air shimmered with unseen energies. Eldrick listened intently to Aurelius's tale, each story a thread in the rich tapestry of the forest's lore. The griffin spoke of times when mythical creatures roamed freely, and the magic of the woods was revered by all. As dawn approached, painting the sky in hues of pink and amber, Eldrick and Aurelius reached the edge of a moonlit clearing. It was here, Aurelius explained, that the moonflower bloomed, bathed in the light of the full moon. Eldrick gazed across the clearing, his eyes searching for the elusive bloom. With Aurelius by his side, he stepped into the clearing. Guided by the gentle wisdom of Aurelius, Eldrick's path through the whispering woods took a turn towards a hidden enchanting part of the forest. As they traversed a dense thicket, Eldrick heard the faintest sound of what seemed like purring and soft meowing. Intrigued, he followed the sounds, leading him to a sight both wondrous and whimsical. There, Nestled in a sun-dappled grove, was a village unlike any other. It was a village of whiskered, cat-like creatures. These creatures, small and nimble, with fur in shades of the forest, greens, browns and greys, roamed about their charming village. Their homes were woven from the boughs of trees and shaped like hollow logs, adorned with soft moss and vibrant flowers. The whispers, noticing Eldrick's arrival, paused their activities. A few curious ones approached, their big, luminous eyes gazing up at him, noses twitching in the air. As they grew comfortable, the village burst into life once more, filled with a symphony of purrs and soft meows, a soothing melody that spoke of comfort and home. 
Eldrick was immediately taken by the whisper's playful nature. They frolicked around him, inviting him into their games with gentle paw taps and swishes of their fairy tails. One, a small, sprightly creature with bright amber eyes, brushed against Eldrick's legs, purring loudly, its fur soft and warm to the touch. The whispers, despite their playful demeanour, possessed a serene wisdom. They shared with Eldrick their knowledge of the forest's herbs and hidden paths, helping him in his quest for the moonflower. They showed him a plant with leaves that shimmered under the moonlight explaining that it could heal minor ailments. As Eldrick spent more time with the Whispers, he found a comforting respite from his journey, their village a haven of peace and joy, reminded him of the simpler pleasures of life. The Whispers, innocent, playfulness and gentle affection brought a light-hearted joy to Eldrick's quest, a reminder of the beauty and wonder that life in the forest held. As the day turned to evening, the village transformed into a twinkling wonderland. Fireflies danced around the homes of the Whispers, their lights mingling with the soft glow emanating from the creatures themselves. Eldrick, sitting amongst his new friends, felt a sense of belonging and warmth. The whispers, sensing Eldrick's need to continue his quest, gathered around him, offering him their blessings. The amber-eyed creature that had first welcomed him pressed a small, glistening stone into his hand, a token of good luck and safe travels. With a heart full of gratitude for the kindness and joy the whispers had shown him, Eldrick bid farewell to the village. As he stepped back into the forest, guided by the starlit sky. He carried with him the playful spirit and gentle wisdom of the whispers, their purrs and meows echoing in his heart, a soothing melody to accompany him on his journey. Continuing his journey, the griffin through the enchanted, whispering woods, Eldrick, now carrying the warmth and playful spirit of the Whispers, arrived at a place of profound tranquility. He found himself at the edge of a serene lake, its surface smooth and undisturbed, mirroring the clear sky and the lush forest that encircled it. This was Mirror Lake a mystical body of water known for its reflective clarity and its ability to reveal deep truths. As Eldrick approached the water's edge, he noticed a sage figure, seated calmly by the lake, seemingly at one with the nature around them. This was the sage of Mirror Lake, an ageless guardian of the forest's lore, known to possess wisdom as deep and vast as the waters before him. The sage, clothed in robes that shimmered with hues of the forest, turned their gaze towards Eldrick and his companion. Their eyes were like pools of ancient knowledge, and in their presence, 
Eldrick felt a profound sense of peace. Greetings, travelers, the sage spoke, their voice echoing the harmonious sounds of the forest. You seek the moonflower, a bloom of great significance and power. Eldrick nodded, his heart open to the wisdom the sage had to offer. Yes, I seek it to save a village of fairies from a blight. Their kin to this forest and their light fades. The sage nodded, understanding the weight of Eldrick's quest. The moonflower you seek grows in a place where the forest's heart beats strongest. A place both sacred and hidden, but know this, the path to it is one of connection and understanding. Eldrick listened intently, as the sage spoke of the interconnectedness of all beings within the forest. Every creature, every plant, every drop of water in this forest is linked in a delicate balance. To find the moonflower, you must understand and respect this balance. For the flower blooms only for those who perceive the forest not as a collection of parts, but as a single harmonious entity. The sage gestured towards the lake. Look into the water, Eldrick. What do you see? Eldrick peered into the lake. At first he saw only his reflection, but as he continued to gaze, the water's surface shimmered, revealing visions of the forest's life. He saw the fairies in their glowing village, the playful whispers, the majestic griffin Aurelius, and even glimpses of creatures he had yet to meet, all living in a beautiful, intricate harmony. The moonflower grows in the heart of the enchanted glade, a place where the forest's magic is most potent. The sage continued, follow the path, where the foxgloves bloom under the crescent moon's light, and you shall find your way. Thanking the sage for their guidance, Eldrick felt a renewed sense of purpose. He now understood that his journey was not only about finding the moonflower, but also about embracing the unity of all life within the whispering woods. With the sage's words echoing in his heart. Eldrick set forth alone from Mirror Lake. His steps guided by a deeper understanding of the forest and its inhabitants. He journeyed onwards. Under the watchful eyes of the stars towards the enchanted glade where the elusive moonflower awaited. As Eldrick ventured deeper into the whispering woods, guided by the wisdom of the sage of Mirror Lake, he found himself at the edge of a vast chasm, the Whispering Chasm as it was known, stretched wide and deep, its other side shrouded in the dense mists of the forest. It was a natural barrier separating the known parts of the forest from its more mysterious and ancient depths, where the moonflower was said to bloom. Eldrick stood at the edge, pondering how he might cross, when a deep, resonant voice boomed from behind him. 
returning, Eldrick was met with a sight both awe-inspiring and humbling. There stood a giant, towering above the tallest trees, his eyes kind and his demeanor gentle. He was a solitary figure, often misunderstood by those who encountered him, due to his immense size and formidable appearance. I am Orin, guardian of the Whispering Chasm, the giant said, his voice echoing like a gentle rumble of thunder. Many fear to tread these parts, and fewer still dare to cross the chasm. Eldrick, undaunted by Orin's size, greeted him with respect. I seek the Moonflower to save a fairy village, he explained, but this chasm stands in my way, and I know not how to cross it. Orin's face softened with understanding. Your quest is noble, and your heart is brave. I will aid you, for your journey is of great importance to the forest. With that, Orin knelt down, allowing Eldrick to climb onto his broad shoulder. The giant then carefully stepped over the chasm, his every movement measured and precise to ensure Eldrick's safety. Eldrick marveled at Orin's strength and the gentle care he took, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. As they crossed, Orin spoke of his life in the forest. Many fear what they do not understand, and so I live in solitude. But the forest is my home, and I protect its depths and its secrets. His words were tinged with loneliness, yet also with a deep love for the Whispering Woods and all its inhabitants. Reaching the other side of the chasm, Orin gently set Eldrick down. The path ahead is treacherous, but you are not alone. The forest watches over you, and your quest brings hope to its heart. Eldrick thanked Orin, feeling a kinship with the gentle giant. Your solitude has not hardened your heart, Orin. You are a true guardian of these woods. Orin smiled a warm, gentle expression that transformed his face. Go forth, Eldrick. Find the moonflower and bring healing to the fairies. And remember... The strength of the forest lies not in its trees or its creatures alone, but in the unity of all its parts. With a final nod of respect to Orin, Eldrick continued his journey now with a deeper understanding of the forest's hidden depths and the gentle heart of its guardian. He ventured further into the uncharted woods his resolve strengthened by the bonds of friendship and understanding he'd been forming along the way. Deep within the heart of the Whispering Woods, Eldrick journeyed on, his path illuminated by the soft, ethereal light of the forest. Following Orin's guidance, he found himself in a secluded glen place untouched by time where the air shimmered with an almost tangible magic. In the centre of the glen stood an ancient ornate mirror, its frame adorned with intricate carvings of woodland creatures and twisting vines. The mirror, unlike anything that Eldrick had ever seen, had a mystical aura, and its surface seemed to ripple with an inner light. As Eldrick approached, he felt a strange pull towards the mirror. It was as if the mirror beckoned him, inviting him to look not just at his reflection, but deeper, into the essence of his being. Hesitantly, 
Eldrick peered into the mirror. At first glance, he saw his own reflection, a weary traveller, marked by the trials of his journey. But as he continued to gaze, the mirror began to reveal more. It showed not just his external appearance, but the depths of his character. Images and scenes from his journey flickered across the surface. His compassionate heart when he offered to help the fairies, his bravery in the face of the unknown, and his unwavering resolve to bring healing to the forest. The mirror reflected Eldrick's kindness, as seen in his gentle interactions with the Whispers, and his wisdom gleamed from the sage at Mirror Lake. It showed his deep connection to the forest and its creatures, highlighting moments of understanding and empathy. As Eldrick watched these reflections of his inner self, a profound sense of clarity washed over him. The magic mirror, in revealing his true nature, bolstered his resolve. He understood that his journey was more than a quest for the Moonflower. It was a testament to the strength and kindness within him, qualities that defined him far more than his physical prowess. Eldrick also realized that the mirror's magic was a reflection of the forest itself, a mirror to the soul of anyone who sought truth within its depths. It was a guardian of sorts revealing the innermost truths and guiding those who were brave enough to confront themselves. Eldrick stepped away from the mirror. He now knew that the trials ahead were not just challenges to be overcome, but opportunities to grow and to reaffirm the values that guided him. The enigma of the magic mirror had imparted a crucial lesson. The power of self-reflection and the importance of understanding your own heart. With these insights, he continued his journey, heading deeper and deeper into the whispering woods, closer to the heart where the moonflower bloomed, and closer to fulfilling his promise to the fairy village. As twilight descended upon the whispering woods, painting the skies in hues of lavender and rose, Eldrick's journey led him deeper into the heart of the forest. The sage's words echoed in his mind, guiding him towards the enchanted glade, where the rare and mystical moonflower was said to bloom. The air around him was charged with an expectant magic, as if the forest itself held its breath in anticipation. The path grew more ethereal as starlight began to filter through the canopy, casting a gentle silver glow on the forest floor. Eldrick noticed the foxgloves, their bell-shaped flowers aglow under the crescent moon's light, leading him like beacons through the woods. It was as if the forest itself was conspiring to guide him on his quest each plant and creature a silent ally in his journey. Finally, he stepped into the enchanted glade, a clearing untouched by time, where the air shimmered with a delicate luminescence. In the center of the glade stood the moonflower bathed in the soft radiance of the night sky. It was a breathtaking sight, the flower was luminescent, its petals emitting a gentle light that pulsed in rhythm with the subtle heartbeat of the forest. The moonflower was unlike any bloom Eldrick had ever seen. Its petals were translucent and seemed to be woven from moonbeams shimmering with a spectrum of ethereal colors. 
the flower exuded a soothing aura, its presence both calming and invigorating, as if it was imbued with the very essence of the forest's life force. Eldrick approached the moonflower with a sense of reverence. He could feel the healing energy that radiated from it, a gentle yet powerful force that seemed to resonate with the deepest part of his soul. The air around the flower was filled with a sweet fragrance, a blend of night-blooming jasmine and something otherworldly which enveloped Eldrick in a sense of peace and well-being. As he reached out to touch the moonflower, Eldrick felt a surge of energy coursing through him. It was as though the flower was communicating with him, imparting its wisdom and strength. He knew in that moment that the moonflower had the power to heal not just the fairy's blight, but also to restore balance and harmony to the forest. Gently, Eldrick plucked the moonflower carefully to preserve its radiant beauty. The flower continued to glow in his hand. Its light, a symbol of hope and renewal. As he held the moonflower, Eldrick felt a profound connection to the forest and all its inhabitants, a bond that seemed to transcend time and space. With the moonflower safely in his possession, Eldrick prepared to leave the enchanted glade. The stars above twinkled in silent approval, and the night creatures of the forest whispered their gratitude. The journey back to the fairy village, with the healing moonflower in hand, was a journey of triumph, a sign of his courage, kindness, and the enduring magic of the Whispering Woods. As Eldrick emerged from the depths of the Whispering Woods, carrying the luminescent petals of the moonflower, the fairy village came into view, bathed in the soft light of dawn. The fairies, sensing his approach, gathered at the edge of the village, their faces etched with a mixture of hope and apprehension. As he entered the village, Eldrick opened his palm to reveal the glowing moonflower petals. At the moment, the village erupted in a burst of joy and colour, the fairies, their faces lighting up with radiant smiles, fluttered around him, their wings creating a whirlwind of iridescent hues. The air was filled with their melodious voices, singing songs of gratitude and relief. Leela, her eyes shining with tears of joy, approached Eldrick. You've brought back not just the moonflower, but the very essence of life to our village, she said, her voice trembling with emotion. Your bravery and kindness have saved us. The fairies gathered around the moonflower petals, their hands extended towards them. As they chanted in their ancient, lilting language, the petals began to dissolve into a shimmering mist, enveloping the village in a radiant glow. Slowly, the blight that had once withered their homes and dimmed their lights lifted, revealing the true beauty of the fairy's village once more. The flowers bloomed in vibrant colours, the trees regained their luscious greenery and the fairy's light shone brighter than ever before. The transformation was magical, the village once again a haven of peace and enchantment, the forest itself seemed to share in the celebration. The trees swayed gently, their leaves rustling in what sounded like whispered things. The streams sparkled clearer and the birds sang in harmonious choruses. It was as if the forest itself 
sighed in relief, its very essence infused with a renewed vitality and life. Eldrick, watching the miraculous transformation, felt a profound connection to the fairies in the forest. He realized that his journey had been more than a quest. It had been a journey of discovery, not only of the forest's secrets, but also of his own inner strength and compassion. The fairies, in their gratitude, bestowed upon Eldrick a gift a small pendant shaped like a leaf, glowing with the same light as their wings. This is a token of our eternal gratitude, Leela explained. It will protect you and remind you that you're always a friend of the fairies. As the celebrations continued, Eldrick felt a sense of fulfillment and contentment. He had embarked on a journey filled with challenges and wonders, and had emerged not just as a hero to the fairies, but as a guardian of the forest's harmony and balance. The fairies' village, now a kaleidoscope of joy and colour, was a sign of the resilience of life and the power of kindness. And as Eldrick prepared to leave with the fairies' pendant around his neck, he knew that his bond with the Whispering Woods and its inhabitants would last a lifetime. As the day drew to a close, the fairy village, now pulsing with new life, prepared for a celebration unlike any other. Word of Eldrick's deed had spread through the Whispering Woods, and the beings he had befriended on his journey came to join in the festivities. The whispers, with their playful antics and soft purring, arrived in a flurry of excitement. Orin, the gentle giant, approached with careful steps, his presence commanding yet tender. High above, Aurelius the griffin circled before landing gracefully at the edge of the village. His majestic wings folded neatly behind him. The clearing was transformed into a magical arena of celebration, lit by the glow of fairy lights and the soft shimmer of the moonflower's essence. Lanterns hung from the trees, casting a warm inviting light, and the air was filled with the intoxicating scent of blooming flowers. Music began to play, a symphony of natural sounds harmonized with the gentle strumming of fairy instruments. The melodies were both uplifting and soothing, echoing the joy and tranquility of the forest. Eldrick, standing amidst his new friends, felt a deep sense of belonging and accomplishment. The fairies danced in the air, their movements a dazzling display of grace and beauty. The whispers joined in, leaping and twirling with joyous abandon. Even Orin swayed gently to the rhythm, his deep laughter resonating like a soft rumble through the clearing. Aurelius too tapped a clawed foot in time with the music, his eyes reflecting the festivities with a wise and content glimmer. As the celebration continued, Leela flew up to Eldrick, her face radiant with gratitude. Eldrick, you've become a hero and a friend to us all. Your courage and kindness have woven a new chapter in the story of our forest. The gathered beings cheered. Eldrick was presented with a crown woven from the finest leaves and flowers a symbol of his bravery. The night was filled with laughter, stories and shared memories. As the moon climbed higher in the starlit sky, Eldrick realized that his journey had changed him in ways he could never have imagined. As the first light of dawn began to paint the sky with hues of soft pink and golden orange, the time came for Eldrick to 
bid farewell to the whispering woods. The air was still, his heart brimming with memories, as he said goodbye and began his journey home. As he stepped out of the forest, the magic of the woods seemed to fade into the background, but its essence remained with him. The whispering woods, once a place of mystery, was now a cherished friend, its whispers, a comforting presence in his heart. Eldrick looked back one last time, before heading home, heading to bed, as the sun began to set, drifting and floating so peacefully, so relaxed to sleep into slumberland. <laughs>